I don't think it's anywhere else in the world like Seabury, Florida. This place has been around for such a long time. I remember coming here when we first started, when Peter and I first started racing. I think the first race I was here was 1971. Drivers love coming here. It's it's such a brutal place to race. It's, it's the surface is very rough. It was pretty much sorted out for a GT car to be able to win and really a GT car almost in stock street form really. I mean, there were very little modifications done to those early 911s. That car was pretty special. I remember um, after that race was over, that car kind of vanished. I, I never uh, remember seeing that car uh, again until I saw it here. It, it really put goosebumps on my, the back of my neck because those cars really signified to, to Porsche and to 911 owners that the 911 was a car that really was serious about what it, its performance capabilities was. And to be able to win Daytona and to win Sebring back to back really put that 911, it showcased the technology of a 911. When I got into that car, even though I hadn't sat in that car or seen that car in 40 years, I sat in it and the, and the car is very beautifully prepared and it felt just like it did 40 years ago. Well, the Sebring car was yellow, and, and, but that was, we didn't have any choice about that. It's the only car that's ever been yellow. That's, that's you know, absolutely the case. All of our cars, other than that car from 1973 have been red, white, and blue. We took the delivery of this car, of the yellow car, um, literally a couple days before the race. We didn't do that typical, um, you know, Brumos inspection of every single piece. We just had to um, have blind faith that it was put together and it was put together properly and we didn't have any problems. We didn't have any problems with that car during the race, except for the rock through the windshield. Back then, it was not unusual for us to do four-hour stints together with no, with no problems. There was no hydration problems. There was no fatigue problems. You just drove them and you were having a great time. And it was great. You couldn't do that today in a, in a, in a modern uh, GT car. So much more downforce, so much more road holding, acceleration, braking, all those things are wear and tear on the body. The difference between then and now was racing was when you weren't racing, when you were off the racetrack, it was a much more gentle atmosphere. Now it's so structured that, you know, Team A would never go to see Team B, would never be invited by Team B. The teams were all, all helped each other. They all were there. Uh, they were competitive on the racetracks, but they were friends off the racetrack. And we would all go to dinner all the time. And that's the big change, I think, uh, in, in racing in general, is that it's, so, it's such a big business now. sits down when you power off a corner, and that's the same way it felt back in the actual 73 car. The, the steering wheel felt the same, it was the same diameter of the steering wheel, that, that's cool. So the bigger the steering wheel, the cooler it is to drive it, because there's just a lot more work that you can put on it. Um, and so that car totally met my expectations, exceeded the expectation, because it was so beautifully prepared.